Yo yo YouTube Clankers here and today I'm here with another episode of TGTV. In this episode, this lesson is number 6 in the series. So if you haven't watched all the of the episodes and you want to catch up, you can go ahead and click on the playlist on my channel. And today's lesson will be about win cons, win conditions. Um, first of all, I will explain a tiny bit about what a win con exactly is. And then I will go ahead and show it in battle because I feel like showing showing uh, a win con in battles will be a mo um, bit more productive than just talking about what it exactly is. If you already know everything there is to know about win cons, the next episode will be about playstyles and it will be a series about playstyles. So ch go ahead and check that out if you want to. But for now I will talk about win conditions. So what is a win condition? Now a win condition is pretty much <laughs> like it says. A Pokemon or a certain thing in a battle that makes sure that you win the battle or your opponent if it's your opponent win con. Um, for example, if you are, let, let's go, let's go, um, in-game, if you are in a grass type gym, and you come strolling with your Char uh, Charmeleon or something like that, your Charmeleon will pretty much be able to kill everything, because of the simple type of advantage, it's a good special attack, blah blah blah, so it, it will probably win you the gym battle. Well, you could argue that the Charmian will be your win condition versus the gym leader. Because it will probably win you that match. It will make sure that you'll defeat your gym leader and you will get that badge. So, something like that, that um, a mom that can win you a game because of its typing, maybe because of its speed, of or its defensive capability or something like that it's called a win condition a win con and you see it a lot in competitive battling and the sad part is that a lot of people don't realize that um, you must play with your win conditions in the back of your head because you can sack a random mount for example uh, if you face a like really hard physical attacker and you want to save the mom that is in versus it you can sack something else you can just switch it in and let it die but if you let the wrong thing die you might just lose the battle because of it and I want to show you this in like three matches I believe and I will cut to the first battle and second battle stuff like that but we're already in the scene of the first battle let me switch off the music normal right here and oh wait <laughs> my switch eyes <laughs> yes okay so this was a NU battle I had a long time ago and it's just a normal nor, uh, a normal standard NU battle um, it was a while back so baton pass was allowed back then so that won't uh, really hurt the demonstration but looking at my opponent's team, a lot of it is weak to fire. Just Vivillon is weak to fire, Cryogonal is weak to fire, Torterra is weak to fire. So Magmortar can potentially put in work. Magmortar also has the ability um, Vital Spirits. So Sleep Powder from Vivillon cannot put me to sleep. So it's pretty damn nice. So. I've got to keep in mind that a McMortar of mine can sweep. But looking at my opponent's team, I see... I see this annoying little lantern, which I have Earthquake, so I can put it in range of it. I'm a Salt Fest, so I can take a hit. But i uh, got to put in mind that that lantern might be able to put me in range of like a Vivillon and lose me the game. Also, I can not necessarily beat a Combuscan 101, so... Probably like Mantine has to take on the Combuscan for um, just before I can win this match. I've got to keep in mind that this Gorbis can set up, and I, I need to keep my sturdy on my Steelix. 
because of the fact that I might be able to just live a hit, stall it out, learn watch watch his move set, and I have Scarf Scyther, so I can kill that if I want to. If this is plus one speed after speed boost, I can kill it as well with an aerial ace. This can be can just be nuked. This can be nuked. So Scyther is important as well. So I gotta keep that in mind. Looking at it, Rotom doesn't really do much. This game. It doesn't win versus something. As does a bomb smell. I, I mean it can kill a Torterra and it can kill um, it can chip this Vivium and it can nuke this thing, which is really nice. So before my McMortal can sweep my win condition, because this is my win condition, I've gotta chip his team a little bit. Um, and I've gotta keep in mind that those two are among just the most important threats. I've gotta keep in mind. So let's watch this battle. He leads off with his lantern, and I just wanna scout what set or uh, what kind of uh, lan uh, lantern it is. I know it can take a scald. And he's probably just going for the full switch, predicting me to switch out or something like that. As he does, which is pretty nice. So I know it's not like an offensive set, it's a defensive set. He goes into a Storm Terror, and I <laughs> really don't know why. I mean, I can kill a Fire Blast. But if I miss Fire Blast, he can kill me with an Earthquake. So it was kind of risky of me staying in here. But I, I, I just couldn't risk him sending up the rocks. To predict my switching to like Scyther. Because it would just win versus my team. So I had to go for Fire Blast. I had to risk the game. I had to risk my win condition. But it's just. I had to do it to win the game. That's it. And fortunately I do land that hit. He brings out his Combusk. And then again I can beat this thing. And I don't need my ma uh, Mantine really for anything. So I'm just gonna let Mantine chip him down. I mean, he's going for the Shadow Claw. And I'm gonna put him in range that it's just to a KO in. Which is it's just extremely nice. Here he goes into his Gorbis. And I know I, I, I don't want to switch straight into my Steelies because my Sturdy will be broken that way. So I just have to stay in. I have to pressure him. And if he goes for Shell Smash, I can find out if it's Focus Stash or not. If it was focus sash, I just break a sash right here, and I can safely bring in my my um, scyther. The reason for that is I thought it would kill from this range, but I have no idea what calc I did. I I believe I did it with like bandit, but it won't be as big as problem. I could just sack steelix, go into my scyther again, and kill with another U-turn. In this case. Ice Beam, it doesn't really matter that it freezes, uh, he can just let me <laughs> go down, I can U-turn, and I know at this point that a there, there is no real good switch in versus my Magmortar, except that little Lantern, and I don't want him to like crit call me or put me in rage of a hurricane, so I have to go into a Bomb of Snow, just because, um, I can let my Obama Snow die right here, and I I gotta keep in mind if I win versus this 101, uh, I might get chip damage on another mom, which is great. So I'm just setting up a sword stance because I know he ha doesn't have the HP fire. He switches into his Cryogonal, which is fine. And at this point, I can Ice Shard the Vivion if it comes in, which it does, which is pretty nice because he can't go for Quiver Dance right here. Because another um, Ice Shard will kill. He takes me out with a Hurricane. He goes down with um, Hill Damage. It doesn't matter. I beat this 101. And that's basically how you play a win condition. Because look at that. 31%. If it would have created, it would have done like there. <laughs> it would have gone right there. And a Hurricane would have killed me. So I couldn't risk my Magmortar earlier. Because it would have lost me the game. So that's basically how you play a win condition because like like it just says right here, I can earthquake it might not um it, it might not have killed him and a crit cult I believe didn't kill me but let's say it did I still had two monsters that could outspeed him and kill him which is pretty nice. Um like you see it's it's low ladder but a win condition 
is still important to keep in mind. It's important to keep your win condition in mind to win a match. So that's basically the first match I wanted to show you guys. And I just <laughs> will skip ahead into the next match. So I'm back and again I have a replay of a match um, where win conditions really show. And um, this wasn't a battle of mine, it was a pretty famous battle from martial law. It was <laughs> like XY I believe or early auras because this uh, Landris is still allowed, the Patan Pass is still allowed. Um, like this, this team, I believe this is Swords Dance, uh, Baton Pass, Gliscor. It's um, the cool set that Dragon Knight doesn't run anymore, but it's like uh, Dragon Claw, Iron Hat, Earthquake, and Extreme Speed, which is a pretty unique set, and it doesn't have setup. But looking at it, that set, I mean, Earthquake kills this. Extreme speed from like plus four, I believe, if um, this thing passes it on, uh, passes it on, or plus two might even kill this. Plus four might um, might kill this with a dragon claw. Iron head kills this. Um, this is gonna be his lead. <laughs> so dragon knight can put him work if that ferrothorn just goes away. And I noticed Tyrantar had fire punch back in the day, so. What martial law has to do is chip down at Ferrothorns with a like one fire punch is enough to put them in range, I believe. Um, he has to lead off with that's the scary part with his win condition Dragonite right here because nothing really has a good le um, matchup versus a Scalopy. And the thing that he has to keep in mind is that he, he, it can't get lowered to the point that Reuniclus can kill with like a plus two side shock because it loses in the game so looking into that we'll just get into this match like I said Scalopede is just a safe lead and Dragonite just has to um, make sure his opponent is chipped down like it says it's it's a uh, baton pass set and luckily he gets rid of it Otherwise, he would have been in trouble. Ferrothorn comes out. It's just Tyrantar indeed has that fire punch. It can set up rocks um, to put like a Landris in range to put a Raikou, um, well, a range of like a low bunny if it um, doesn't work out. And it's also nice because of the fact that Badiancy is a magnet evolved yet, so now he can get up his rocks. And it might scare him out of the fire punch. In this case, he stays in, goes for the fire punch, puts him in range, and at this point, he pretty much wins the match. Which is amazing. He can just go into Gliscor, start sword dancing up. It might fail the first time, because of the fact that Reuniclus, ah, like a 1 plus 1 sword dance, might not kill it. But Gliscor can go for sword dance either way. And at this point, the scary part is that, that Reuniclus. It's not killed from plus two. It's from killed from plus four. So what he has to do is either click the earthquake, um, predicting a reuniclus to come in, which is a bad play in my opinion because these things carry ice beam. But he has to pretty much go for a baton pass into a mom that can beat, uh, can ch chip down at Reuniclus. So he goes for a, a baton pass into Megalopony which can indeed can chip down Reuniclus. It just kills Ferrothorn right here which is pretty nice. Even gets a plus one boost um, on top of that. The opponent switches into Reuniclus at this point it does live <laughs> and this is pretty bad because he goes for the uh, frustration instead of the return. So it's 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 pretty gnarly. It could have lost him the match right here, but keeping that in mind, he can just go into Gliscor because Reuniclus has to set up alongside it to actually win, and it doesn't. And Gliscor is able to go for the agility, and at this point, 
um, he, he can go for another source dance and pass it along into Dragonite, which takes indeed a hit from plus two because it wasn't plus three, like I said in the preview. At this point, Dragonite <laughs> is crazy good and is able to pretty much clean up because nothing takes this hit. So, again, it shows you that a win condition is important <laughs> because. If he switched into, um, with that little Swords and boost, if he switched into Dragonite at first, he might have lost to Reunoclash, which would have been pretty bad. So, he had to make that middle ground play and go for the low and he chipped down his team, look for that opening, and he found it. He didn't risk his Dragonite, which basically secured him the game, because this will just clean up and he doesn't even go into Raikou because he knows he dies to an earthquake. So again, it shows you that the wind condition, you, you have to keep it safe. Because when your wind condition dies, pretty much your entire chance of winning a game might die. And at this point, um, the opponent's Skullpeed got critted early in the game. Which might have lost him the game, which is pretty, I, I get if he's mad, but it, it basically shows you, you can't risk anything with your ring condition. In this case, Marshall had some luck and this guy doesn't, didn't, but I will go ahead and go to my last game and I will see you guys there. So the last game is a monotype battle I had with Ride on Shiny. Uh, <laughs> it isn't like a top, um, a, a top barrel or anything, but it was a fun battle um, with a good friend of mine back then. But it was Mono Dark versus Mono Rock, and uh, my win conditions. I mean. Mandibus has a horrible, horrible matchup. Hoopa, um, there are two sturdy mons, which is pretty annoying. Tyranitar just doesn't have the greatest matchup of all time. Sableye, burning things will be handy and will pretty much open the door for my little wing condition here called Crawdon. Because if I can break his sturdy right here. Uh, uh, Golden Sturdy, if I can break your Sturdy right here. And if I can get this um, Tyranny, uh, <laughs> Tyranny, sorry, Tyrantrum chipped down and Diancy a tiny bit chipped down, I can win this match with my Crawdon. And I know Bisharp is also a Steel type, which is super effective, but it doesn't have the greatest pri Steel priority. It doesn't have Steel priority. And. Um, it's basically a thing that I can use versus Rhydon um, or like Gigalith to put it in range if it is not in range, but it is. So that's basically the thing I gotta keep in mind. And I can't afford to get a Brox because I need my Crawdon at full health in case it does uh, have to take a hit. I need that. So the thing I've gotta prevent is rocks on my side of the field. And the thing I need to just need to do is indeed break these two sturdies, chip you down, chip you down, and Crawdon, my win condition wins. I can't lead with Crawdon. It might just put an amazing offensive pressure on his team, but I can't risk uh, just him leading Diancy and gaining momentum of that because a Moonblast would destroy my team. So I have to keep I ha I have to keep Crawdon in the back. Um, in this case, he leads off with Golem. I, like I said, break his sturdy, and I can't switch out because I have to keep rocks off my side of the field. And in this case, it just um, ends up dying to burn. Whoa, whoa, what, what happened to Nancy right here? <laughs> I have no idea, but in this case, I stay in as well. I need damage on this Nancy. I need it chipped, and with a snarl it works pretty nice i mean i eventually lose this game uh, this, this matchup versus like <laughs> weird potato dancy right here and mega sableye 
but I can chip him down. And this point, the when he switched out, he was already in range. The only thing I had to do is cripple this thing, and he just brings it in, and I have to break Gigalith 30, and I win. So that's amazing. And this, I, he wasn't even Lum DD or anything. It's just Dragon Tail, which is really weird. I have no idea why. But at this point, I believe he is in range after like a Rocky Helmet hit or something like that from my um, horrible matchup Mandibus. So I get a Brock's right here. I switch into that Mandibus uh, because now it is in range indeed. And the only thing I have to do is a tiny, I believe it's not even needed because the rocks are up. I believe at this point I just win with Crawdon, which is in the back. And at this point, right on, just I have no idea why. I chip him down, la la la. And I stay in because a close combat drop or anything. I don't even care. And at this point, Terrakion is quite bulky. And because of its, uh, because it's the fact that um, it is a mono rock type team, it might just have a Basho Berry. So I couldn't risk it. And I knew, like, Losing Mega Sableye isn't big of a deal because it only comes down to the fact can Crawdon kill the uh, clean up and it can you just especially when I burn it. In this case, he brings in Gigalith, and now I am sure it is in range, so I win this match. And it doesn't matter what I do right here. In this case, I'm just whittling down, and here I come in, pick pick up this this chip. This win, and at this point, it doesn't matter what the rest of my team. I I was just fearing the Basho Berry, and he might just go for the Sacred Sword. I mean, Hoopa can. I thought it just nuke this thing, which it can. And at this point, even a Basho Berry can save him. So I just win, which is amazing. And this is an example of a match that could have gone extremely wrong I mean in the end I do win with my win condition but it could have gone wrong because of the fact that I played this too safe and that's a thing you gotta keep in mind that's like a trap don't play too safe don't just <laughs> nurture that win condition of yours you sometimes have to take a risk because that could have been bad, honestly. If if Terrakion was indeed a Pasho Berry, I shouldn't have played so so passive aggressive. It could have set up a SD and won the game. So that's a risk you gotta take sometimes. And in this case, I didn't take that risk, and it in the end did play a uh, pay off for me. But it could have gone wrong. So that's a thing that I do want to, uh, to want you guys to keep in mind because sometimes you indeed have to play it out that it's so safe, but you have to keep that that win condition of yours in in prestigious, just amazing health. Sometimes you have to. Sometimes you've got to take that risk, and it's a matter of feeling, I guess, because you might not know if it was special. It could have been Basho, it couldn't have been. In the end, I believe it was like Bandit or something like that, or Scarf. I believe it, it was Scarf because it outspent my Hoopa, but I couldn't have taken that risk. And that's pretty much what I've got to tell you about win conditions. Um, I do want to mention that I showed three examples of offensive win conditions. There are also things like defensive win conditions. Um, a great example of that is stall in a lot of stall games you rely on chancy to take like special hits or um for quack to protect you versus setup so there are indeed defensive win conditions because of course you if if you face a team with a lot of special attackers and one physical attacker, you can't leave that chance in with a physical attacker because it might just lose you the game. So win condition can be offensive as well as defensive. But if you have any questions uh, about win conditions, 
any questions even after watching this video you can leave it in the comment section below or tweet at me on twitter i will always leave that link in the description below and that's pretty much it so i will be going right now uh, next episode will be about like i said play styles you will find out what play style but i will see you guys in the next episode so goodbye I shock very well, but at least you can switch it to Draco me your which is pretty nice. And Latios, um, in turn for that, can put some offensive pressure presence on our teams, which Clefable as fairy type, as a defensive will fairy type, most likely cannot do. And the steel type uh, bar, Metagross can take a lot of hits. It like it can take other dragon hits, which Latios again really likes it can take uh, on fairies which Ladios might struggle against